Hey y'all, um, since plants take a while, I figured I would go over some of the things I showed you in my first video and what I'm growing. And if to be clear, I grow everything from seed and I will show you some of the places I get my seeds from. And um, some of them have great pictures so you can see what they're supposed to look like later on. So the first uh, place I'm gonna go with, um, I will, I'll go with the boring ones because some of them have awesome pictures. Um, I went with, uh, let's go with these ones. This is a uh, Hudson Valley Seed Company, and I'll put the links below if you're interested in getting them. I didn't show in my uh, video, I forgot, because I grew them in the ground, but we started off with some Danvers carrots. Uh, these are pretty nice looking carrots. They're from Massachusetts, where I went to school, and they're one of the oldest carrots in America, anyway, that we eat. I'm not sure how they're doing. Um, some of the slugs got to them in the ground, so they are kind of hard to do if you've got a, lot of, a little rain in Hawaii and they kind of ate some of the babies. So um, I have, I think, only three left, so we'll see how they do. You cannot transplant carrots. They do not do well, and you're probably not going to have much success. So you must direct sow them, and that's the hard part with pests and things. Um, the bok choy that was in the uh, milk jug was from them as well. They were, it was the Shanghai green baby bok choy. And they did really well. And the corn that I showed um, was the blue jade dwarf corn. And if you're looking for a dwarf corn that will grow in a small container, this is one of the dwarf corns. I harvested two so far. And I guess I'm doing something wrong because I guess you're supposed to let them sit till they get purple. And I like the color. As you can see, it's purple. But none of them really had color. Um, they were all just regular white corn. Um, some had purple specks in it, but just a little. So I guess I harvested them too early, but I was just scared that they would be dry and not so good when you boil and eat them. But they did taste very delicious. The next company I went with... Um, that did well, and all of these companies, they all have very high germination rates, um, was the cabbage that I showed you in the last video that's doing great. I wasn't sure it was going to do well in Hawaii, and I have a lot of seeds left, but I will do some more next spring, is the Golden Acres um, seed. And this is all from the Kitagawa Seed Company. This one doesn't have a picture for some reason. The rest kind of have like just a green and yellow print, no color. Uh, the eggplant I showed you that has not um, produced yet, but it is flowering. This is the Japanese green hybrid eggplant. So it's supposed to be like a pretty lime green. And it's like the Choroku. So I'm excited to see how that comes out. It's a long Asian eggplant, but the color is lime green, not purple. This is the Himo Torogashi. It's supposed to be a wrinkly uh, totogashi spicy pepper. I grew a couple of them and they don't do so well for some reason. And maybe I planted it too early in Hawaii because it's a little bit, um, it was a little bit cool during the spring so maybe it didn't do too well. I have only one left and it has not flowered yet out of all my peppers. So um, that one didn't do too well here. And this is the wombok I showed you, the Napa cabbage. It's a spring crisp. And it's supposed to do well um, in, I guess, places that aren't as cool. But they don't do well in warm climates, so you have to just be careful. This one's a Chinese cabbage hybrid. But they're supposed to be resi disease resistant, so if you want to begin to try growing Napa cabbage in a container garden, this would be probably the best bet. These are some cheap things I got off Amazon. I would not really totally rely on Amazon seeds because I've had some problems uh, with germination rates, such as my San Marzano tomatoes. Um, I don't have the package for that, but I ordered those off Amazon. They came with about 25 seeds and only five sprouted. Very poor germination rate. Although it's very prolific and it's doing well and I have about 70 tomatoes so far, um, out of 25 seeds, out of five, that's a very poor germination rate. Um, but
but I can't complain. I'm kind of torn because the plants that did survive uh, are producing great yields of tomatoes. But out of the five, only four survived. The fifth one was so stunted, it just eventually died as a seedling. Um, but anyway, um, these are just cheap ones. Um, the peppers I showed you, the cayenne, it's doing okay so far. And um, the ancho chili, that one didn't flower yet, but it did grow and it's pretty mature right now. Anaheim pepper. I'm sorry, I got that mixed up. The Anaheim did not flower, the Ancho did. There's two flowers on that one. The Habanero, that one grew. It took a lo long time, but it did not flower yet. It's a pretty slow grower, and it's growing slower than any other pepper I planted. The Serrano is doing really well. The one I showed you with a bunch of peppers, it's just growing crazy. And uh, this one's a Jalapeno. One's not doing so well, the other one's very, very strong in a bigger pot, but it's probably my fault because I put the other one that's not doing so well in a smaller pot. This one's the Hungarian hot wax pepper that I showed on my other video, and it's got a bunch of flowers and one that's pretty mature to pick. And this is the zucchini that I showed in uh, one of the pots. This one's a Ford hook, I'm sorry, I said Fordham I think on the other video, but Ford hook I think that one is in the uh, bigger pot, the fabric pot I showed, because I have another one from somewhere else that's in the Manihuni water bottle. Uh, this is the spinach I showed in the milk jug. So this one I got from Walmart. It's just a burpee, the things you get at the garden center. And this is the Thai basil. I got this off Amazon as well. And it's doing great, as you could see in the other video in a milk jug. Three big, tall plants. This is the bell pepper that was in the little planter pot. It's got two flowers so far that have to bloom. So it did do okay. I will say the Amazon ones, um, they take a long time to grow. They germinate, but it took a while for them to get strong. So mm, I wouldn't say they're the greatest seeds. This is also from Amazon, and of course, they're all from different places that send it to you. So, um, for the peppers, they weren't so great, but this is the contender bush bean that I showed that's constantly producing beans. So this one is good. It's from So Right Seeds, if you search it on Amazon. Not sure if they have their own website, but these seeds um, germinated well, and I have two of those going. One in that big pot I showed you, and the other is in a milk jug. And even in a milk jug, it's been producing many beans. All right, so these are also from Amazon, but they're from Korea, and these are authentic Korean seeds. Um, this is that Korean yellow melon that I showed you. That's doing just great in that Home Depot bucket. And this is the melons you can get at uh, Palama Supermarket or H Mart if you like those types of um, melons. You can grow them yourself. And this is the Korean moo that I uh, harvested on the last video. All of these seeds from Amazon that come from Korea, um, but they're shipped from the United States, so they come to you quick. Germinated really well. Um, so this was great and even the directions are in Korean, so I don't even understand it But basically you just put it in a seedling pot and it'll grow. It's fine the other uh, Things I got from Amazon was that early early scarlet globe radish doesn't come in a fancy um, seed packet But it's got a lot in here and that's the radish I showed you that did really well in the milk jug and we used it for some pozole and um, Mexican tacos. I like radish in there um, did really well. They germinate really fast. This is another So Right Seeds. This is my Golden Midget Watermelon. So if you're wanting to start to w grow a watermelon, these are one serving sized small little watermelons that are golden. And um, they're really good if you want to just do it in a small garden. I didn't show it to you. I forgot about it, but it's in another Kratky bucket. So this one's doing well as well. So another place I get my seeds from often is M.I. Gardener. He has a 
pretty big channel on YouTube and now does seeds as well. It's from Michigan, obviously that's for MI. Um, this is the Money Maker Tomato. I didn't show it to you because it's in the front of my house, but I have it in a self-watering bucket. And it did germinate well. All his seeds germinate really well. They have a high germination rate and um, it's growing well and it's got a little bit of flowers about to sprout out. I have a Little Gem Butterhead Lettuce. That one I didn't show you as well. I did a crack key out of a small milk jug. Maybe I'll show you that another day, but that one's doing well as well. This is the purple bumblebee tomato, and I don't know if you can see it, but it has the pretty stripes on there with the stripes of green and red. And that's the one I showed you in my little solo cups that I'm gonna start in a crack key as well. And that one germinated well and is doing fine and very healthy. This is the tiger melon that I told you about with that nice tiger striped melon. It's supposed to be kind of watery tasting, but it has a very floral smell and that's the one that I showed you in the pot that's going up the trellis and doing really well. This is the Purple Beauty Bell Pepper that I talked about. It's also going to be a Kratky hydroponic one with the beautiful purple peppers. I didn't show you these ones. They're also in a Kratky system, um, but uh, just didn't want to keep going. But this is a Casper eggplant. So like I said in the other video, I love things that are unique and different colors. It's just a white eggplant, very beautiful. It's doing really well too, but it's still in its little seedling stage. This is an orange eggplant, almost looks like a tomato, but it's an eggplant. Beautiful colors as well. This is the Moon and Stars watermelon that I'm doing in that cracky storage bin that I showed you in the other video. And it's called Moon and Stars because it all has that big little uh, orange or yellow moon. And the little speckles are the stars. And it's also on the leaves as well. The marigolds I showed you to deter the pests. Um, you can get them easy from like Walmart or Lowe's or even have them as seedlings at Lowe's. But I figured they're pretty cheap on MI Gardener. So I got some Cracker Jack Marigold Mix, and those are the ones that I started from seed in the other video. The one that's doing really well in the crack key system and growing very strong is that Chocolate Striped Tomato. Again, very beautiful striping, beautiful colors. Hopefully it comes out that way. The cucumber I showed you in the crack key system is that Wisconsin Pickling Cucumber. So they're little baby cucumbers, not too big, which is the size I want in case I want to can them or pickle them. The little uh, salad mix that I showed between the little planter pots, uh, between the peppers that make that spring mix, is a free seed from M.I. Gardener. Every time you uh, buy something, he gives you these free salad bowl mix greens, and they pop up really fast and they germinate well. These are three things I just ordered off uh, MI Gardener, um, but I'm not going to plant them yet till uh, I get back from vacation because I don't want them to die. But I wanted to try some soybeans to do some edamame because I do enjoy edamame. And I do like collard greens and they do really well in summer and hot uh, climates. So I think summer's coming up. It's going to be really hot in Hawaii. And I wanted to do some collard greens because I like them with uh, ham hocks. If you've never tried them, you should. They're very delicious. And I wanted to try a different type of carrot. I was thinking maybe um, the ones from Hudson Valley Seeds didn't do so well. So we'll try these carrots. They're a bit longer as well. But I will try them later when I come back from vacation so I don't have to worry about them dying without watering and such. All right, and off to my very, very favorite place to get seeds. And I am just such a seed hoarder. I've got all this and some more, but I'm not going to show you the other ones because I'm not going to plant them, I think, this year yet. But we'll start with a flower. Um, I didn't show you this, but these sprouted up real quick as well. I love zinnias, but I thought these were unique. These are candy cane mix zinnias, and I like all those beautiful speckles and colors and different colors. So hopefully they come out that way. Uh, for peppers... I'm sorry, not peppers. I got that mixed up, but I'm going to go in order. So tomatoes, if you've never been to Baker Creek, 
um, you got to check out their website or their catalog. It is like, if you're into plants, it's like plant porn. Seriously. Um, they got some beautiful stuff, unique stuff. It's great. So this is, uh, I'm growing this as well. I just started these seeds, so they didn't sprout yet, but the blue cream berry tomato. This is yellow with a hint of blue black on the top. And what makes the black and blue on the top is where the sun hits. Um, they're a cherry tomato. So I'm going to try that. Planted this in the seedling box. It didn't sprout up yet as well. The solar flare. Look at those great specks of gold lines on there. Beautiful. They're supposed to taste really good too. This is the Sart Le... Leroy. I don't know. Frick, it's like French or something. I took French for four years and I can't even say it. But um, another blue tomato but also a yellow tomato. So on the bottom it's yellow, where the sun hits it turns a nice beautiful blue. This is a very famous tomato that gardeners love. It's the Berkeley tie-dye pink. So it's kind of like a reverse. It's got the green stripes and a beautiful red. So all these tomatoes, all these plants from Baker Creek Seed, very beautiful. This is one of the top tasting tomatoes in the U.S. It's the Kellogg's Breakfast Tomato. It's a yellow tomato and it's supposed to be a, have a very sweet, delicious taste. Kind of a big, like a beefsteak tomato in size. This is the Carbon Tomato, another great tasting tomato. That's a favorite of people in the U.S. A nice dark red tomato. Also like a beefsteak, very big in size. This is a cherry tomato that's a little bit um, more like a plum tomato, though, in shape. Brad's Atomic Grape Tomato. Same thing. Look at all those beautiful colors. Got that going in the seedling tray. This is a determinate tomato. So all the others I showed are indeterminate, which means they keep growing. If there's no frost or nothing that kills them, they'll just keep producing. But determinate tomatoes just produce a lot of fruit at once and then they die. So this is Purple Rain, a funny looking tomato, but pretty big. Same thing as a, I guess, a steak tomato, beef steak tomato in size. So it's not like a cherry tomato, but it'll produce all these tomatoes and then it will just pretty much die after that. The ones I showed you in the back in the fabric pots that I'm doing the fertilizer experiment with is the Tommy Toe Tomato. It's a bigger cherry tomato but it's supposed to be indeterminate, so it's supposed to keep going until something kills it off. Kills it off, and we'll see how that goes. This is an Amish paste tomato, and I wanted to try it because I like paste tomatoes because it makes great marinara sauce or any kind of sauce, just like the San Marzano's I'm doing. Another kind of like a paste tomato, but I thought was interesting, never heard of it or tried it, is the Korean long tomato. Also almost like a plum tomato. Almost looks like a Jersey Devil tomato with the pointiness of it. This one I showed you in my little cracky cup that I'm starting off as a seedling. It's black from Tula. It's a black tomato from uh, Ukraine, I believe. Started off in Ukraine, but for some reason uh, named after Tula, which is a city in Russia. Don't ask why, but it looks like a beautiful tomato. And the be Blue Beauty I also showed you in my Krapke Cup. Another beautiful blue uh, tomato where the sun hits on the top, turns bluish black, and the rest is red. We'll go with the peppers. Um, we've got the Korean dark green pepper. Um, this one we like to dip in miso sauce, and if I guess you leave it on and it turns red, you can use it to grind up to do the Korean chili peppers that we use to season kimchi and stuff and soups. Um, this is the puma pepper I showed you with the purple leaves that's going on and the rock wool that I showed in the other video. Beautiful colors. So I guess it starts off purple and if you leave it on long it'll become like a regular pepper, pepper from yellows to reds. This is another purple pepper. It's spicy. It's Buena Mulata. Very pretty colors. Love the purple. This is uh, one of the plants I showed you in the other video, the shishito. It's not spicy. It's the type that you stir fry. 
It's a Japanese pepper. So it's a sweet pepper that you can stir fry and it's very delicious. Uh, this one I didn't show you, it is growing already. Uh, in the other video I didn't have time, but it's a sweet chocolate bell pepper. Uh, sweet and chocolatey looking. I like the brown, it's pretty cool. But the cool thing is when all these peppers that have colors, they're usually immature. So if you leave them on long enough, they'll turn red like regular peppers. I'm gonna try this one, it's a les lesia pepper. It's a pointy and funny looking, nice colors, but it's a sweet pepper with a little bit of heat. So um, that'll be good maybe in uh, meatloafs or something where you would need bell peppers, but it uh, just has a little bit more spice to it, maybe some stir fries. We'll go with the eggplants. Um, I've got the ping tongue. I haven't planted it yet. I think I'm gonna do it in summer since um, in Hawaii we can do that late planting. Um, for my trip, I just don't want my seedlings to die yet. Um, got the Murasaki purple, forgot that pepper. This one's supposed to be a sweet pepper, but it's also purple, but not hot like the other purple pepper. This one is the Black Beauty that I believe is in my Menehune water bottle. So this is a different type of uh, zucchini. It's just a darker color than the other one. And then for my melons, I got the Alibaba, which I'll show you uh, that was doing well until a slug ate it. But I'll do an episode on that, on how to propagate cuts, cuttings from a plant that might have been destroyed. But we'll try this. I, I don't know if this will do well because it's a huge melon and I have a small yard. But if it works, then you know it can work in a small space. This is the Kajiri melon I showed you. Beautiful colors. It's supposed to be a cross between a cantaloupe and a honeydew melon. So I'm excited about that one. This is the Cicada Sweet. It's a Japanese melon as well. I didn't plant this yet either because I am not ready to, maybe later on in the year. And then some other ones that are just random. I got some Old Tokyo, which is almost like a mustard green, but not as um, hot or spicy or sharp as a, a like Chinese mustard green. It's supposed to be a little bit more mild. And supposedly you're supposed to uh, be able to eat them in stir fries or make a kimchi with it. And I think I'm gonna try to make a kimchi with it. I did plant about five in a small pot. I didn't show you in the other video, but they're there. And I'm hoping to make a small back batch of kimchi with this and see what it tastes like. But these are free seeds you will get when you order from Baker's Creek. Um, they just give you random free seeds. I've got flowers, I've got radishes and different things from them that were free. So that's a nice touch. Um, and this is that giant of Italy Italian parsley that I showed you that was also in the rock wool next to the peppers. This is a parsley I'm gonna put in my marinara sauce. Um, and then one just for pollinators is the chocolate cherry sunflower. I just love the colors of the sunflower. We've done uh, regular yellow sunflowers before, but this color just turned me, turned me on, so I had to get it. If you're wondering why do you not have so many flowers to pollinate if you're from the mainland, um, we just don't have as many bees where I live. Um, I live kind of in a mountainous range where it rains a lot compared to the rest of Oahu, so the bees don't really come around. We have a lot of wasps that people might not like but they actually eat all the bugs off of the plants, so I let them go. Um, especially the corn, they love the corn and they eat all the aphids off of it. So the wasps, you know, they, they're they there for a reason and they do help. But yeah, I would like to grow more flowers, but if you do understand, if you're from Hawaii, we don't have much space. I don't have much space for flowers. I do love roses. I have a lot of roses on the front of my uh, property where you enter just to make it look pretty, but um, even with those, when they bloom, the bees don't really come around. So in another episode, I will show you how, how to pollinate all of your things if you don't have many bees around or any pollinators such as butter butterflies and such, and we'll go over that as well. So that might answer your question on why I don't plant too many of the other flowers besides some of the zinnias, marigolds, and sunflowers. Um, it's just that there's no purpose to it other than if I buy it, I think it's pretty but it's not gonna attract many bees where I live. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, little seed haul uh, showcase. And if you're interested, I'll put the links below. Um, 
besides uh, little tips on that, um, Amazon, of course, things come fast and it's guaranteed if they don't show up, you'll get your refund. For MI Gardener, the only, um, I guess, bad thing to say is they take a long time to package your things to ship. I guess I'm spoiled because um, when I order other things, even um, I'm a big cigar person, not that it matters with gardening, but when I order cigars, they're shipped right away. Almost within 20 minutes of ordering, they'll send you a confirmation and a, a you know postal package number, shipping number to make sure it was shipped to you. But I've ordered some stuff from here and it almost took like a week and a half for them to even send me an email to ship. And then from there, it takes forever for them to get it to the post office. So if you're a patient person, MI Gardener, I mean, they're reliable. They won't rip you off. He's a big name in YouTube, and he's got very good seeds. They all germinate well, but you've got to be patient with the shipping. Um, you do pay for shipping. It's not very much. But the, co uh, the pro to this is every seed, most of the seeds, are only $2. And you get a lot of seeds. Like, for the instance, this carrot has 100 seeds in it. For Baker Creek, they're my favorite because they ship right away and um, it comes pretty fast to Hawaii. But the only con is some of their unique stuff and some of the popular stuff like the tomatoes. Some of them can go up to $5 a package, um, but most of them are in the $3 range. But I think I'd rather pay $3 and have it shipped for free. Shipping is free um, no matter how much you buy. So, um, I, that's my favorite, in my opinion, is Baker's Creek. Because it ships fast, the shipping's free, and it's just a dollar more. Um, unless you get something really rare, that's five dollars, but most people don't go for those things. So if you found this helpful, press the like button and consider subscribing if you're new. And I'll come back with more gardening videos. Aloha. Happy gardening.